डॉक्टर अम्मी याग्निक थैंक यू ऑनरेबल चेयरमैन सर सर द बिल इज वेलकम स्टेप एज फार एज दी शिप रिसाइकलिंग इंडस्ट्री इज कंसर्नड रिसाइकलिंग इज डिमोलिशन ब्रेकिंग द शिप डिस्ट्रॉइंग द शिप विच हैज कम टू द एंड ऑफ इट्स लाइफ एंड दैट इज वाई दिस बिल हैज बिकम नेसेसरी आई एम थैंकफुल टू द ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर फॉर ब्रिंगिंग the hong kong convention but i would beg to differ here because the hong kong convention is quite weak on the safety of workers on labor standards and also the environment measures i'll come to that point when i just address that particular issue sir the ship in the ship breaking industry is considered to be a labor intensive industry and is also considered to be the most dangerous industry in the world you will find number of studies i do not want to go into the studies by several ngos also but the bill here has come in a very detailed form there are three or four issues which i would like to bring to the notice of the honorable minister that if they can be amended and if these inputs can be incorporated whether in the bill or by way of rules i think it would become a proper document for the safety of the workers safety of the environment as well as how to treat the waste that is coming out of this ship breaking by way of a waste trade law sir the industry uh, in 1983 came to a little light and gujarat has the largest ship building yard which is running on a patch of 10 kilometers along the coastline and the honorable minister mentioned 131 ship breaking yards over their plots which are rented out by the gujarat maritime board on a lease basis i think there are more than 150 now and i may be wrong but the figures can be corrected but sir the issue is not of bringing this bill in a very cons uh, comprehensive way there's too much of a uh, uh, kind of an overlapping when you talk about the national authority then the competent authority and then the various agencies which are already operating on the ground so three issues rule this industry one is the ships that come to this place maybe because the bhavnagar happens to be a place where the beach tide is of an important factor so the workers the people can bring it within after the territorial waters when it comes in the territorial waters you can just pull it and bring it there and park it on one of the plots the first is sir that breaking of the ship the breaking of the ship in an environmental uh, uh, kind of a uh, uh, the arena has to be uh, in conformity with the environmental norms sir because when the ship is being broken most important issue that comes is the toxic and hazardous waste so the honorable minister mentioned the hong kong convention but forgot to mention the basel convention the basel convention is the basic one which introduced the toxic substance in the convention and in india is a signatory to that basel convention the hong kong convention is of a recent time of 2009 has ignored a lot of i think the honorable minister should see the clause by clause of the convention hong kong convention which is today issuing statement of compliance to every ship owner who breaks the ship in the plot and has given as many as 50 statements of compliance to the bhavnagar shipping plots for breaking the ship but the convention is very very diluted it does not take care of the safety of the workers it does not take into account the environmental safety in that area and also does not mention the waste trade which is happening so when a ship is broken and when the ship is broken today the workers are being given some kind of a training because they use gas cutters they use machines several matters have gone to the high court of gujarat and also travel to the honorable apex court sir a ship had come which had a lot of content of asbestos and the workers were afflicted with asbestosis and today also a study says that one worker out of 10 is afflicted with 
asbestosis. Very difficult, it's an occupational hazard, and the National Institute of Occup Occupational Hazard has not been able to deal with this, and the workers go on suffering asbestosis. Sir, also recently, a documentary film was filmed on a ship that was a gas tanker, and the gas tanker had mercury levels so high that there was an issue of mercury, whether it was being treated or not, and that issue also had come to the fore, and that is why workers' safety becomes very important. It is not giving masks to them, it's not giving them proper equipment, but it is a breaking industry, sir. We are breaking a ship which is 26 year old, 25 years old, maybe 30 years old, because that's the outer limit. These are gas tankers, they come from outside, and that is where I think the safety measures in a proper environment need to be taken care of. When this is being broken, the environmental waste that goes out into the environment is equally hazardous. And so there is no clearance of environment ministry mentioned here, sir. The maritime board is the agency, the pollution control board is the agency, and also the environment ministry will come into the picture. I would request the honorable minister to see that the environment ministry is also seen, is also brought in here in order to see that what kind of environment clearances are being given to the ship industry, sir. And after the wood has been given, things are sold from the ship. The iron, the metal, uh, whatever useful things, sir, whatever is left needs to be traded as a waste. And are there any laws for the waste trade that is missing in this? But the most important thing that is missing, sir, here is, I would like to draw the attention of the Honorable Minister, sir. The definition mentions any ship, sir. The ship is man ship registered in India, whether it comes to the ship plot, sir, there are instances and instances that the ship, ha when the ship comes to the shore of a country, it has a flag. And the flag is of the country from where it comes. Sir, European Union has got very stringent environmental standards, very strict standards for the workers who break these ships. And now the it has moved to South Asia, so because we have got low environmental standards, safety standards, though we are a member of the Indian labor International Labor Organization, we have still not been able to give workers the safety that is required as per the Factories Act. That is why South Asia patch, sir, has got the highest number of shipyards. But the flag of the ship, sir, if the European Union says that if the ship as an European flag, it will not be subject to demolition in these countries because they have low environmental standards. So this aspect has to be taken into account by the Honorable Minister, which is not reflecting anywhere. But what happens, sir? Where is the loophole? The ship gets sold and resold and gets a flag of a very small um, uh, island, which is not known. Very difficult to find out. Where is this small island situated in the world? And the ship is bearing that flag when it comes to the shores of Gujarat. And when you try to find out, because right now also I am maybe subject to correction, the Honorable Minister may say that on the shores of Bhavnagar, there's a ship that is lying there, platinum, London, and, London. and it is practically not been able to be tugged to the island where it is registered, in a very small island, I don't want to name the island because of maybe there are, the matter might be alive in the apex court, but there is hazardous material in that. Neither it can be broken because of the environment measures, neither there is a, nor, nor there, was a, there is a law for this. And so the ship is there, completely tilted, cannot be taken away, cannot be broken. So what happens to these kind of ships that are brought? So the flag of the ship needs to be somewhere put in the uh, uh, bill so that the authorities are able to find out the correct place from where the ship has come, how many countries the ship has travelled, what was it and how it has landed here. So the onus also goes onto the ship uh, facility, ship breaking facility, which is buying the ship, the ship owner. How would he depend on the documents? So that aspect needs to be uh, taken into account. It is not uh, mentioned anywhere here, sir. Sir, so another aspect which I would like to draw the attention of my, of the Honourable Minister is that you have mentioned that there would be a survey. Who does the survey? How is it done? Because survey will entail a number of, because a ship has been kind of a small living town which has been floating on the seas, whether it's the seven seas or the oceans or wherever, but it has got every other system within it. And so how would you treat this, how, who would do this survey? Very vague, sir, in this uh, survey is not practically defined step by step. Who would be the surveying authority? And will that authority be coordinating? 
with all these other agencies, whether the environment ministry, whether expert survey, uh, surveyors would be there, would they be uh, uh, doing the, even the engine oil part or the chemical part or the storage part or the material that is broken and the treatment of it and will it give a certificate which would be renewed or how long the ship has been in use or whatever it has brought. I think, sir, it is a very important issue that ultimately spills in the arena of the courts. And the courts would then ask for the technical inputs. That is where I think the Honorable Minister needs to look into it. This loophole has to be plugged and the bill has to be amended on this part. Sir, another thing is that one simple line has been taken in uh, Clause 15, that the workers' safety is safe and uh, safety measures. So it cannot be as vague as it can be as it is in the Factories Act. We need to say, spell out. You need to contextualize these workers are specialized, doing specialized work in ship breaking. They cannot be uh, termed with other workers. They cannot be put at par with other workers. So just providing a mask or some kind of an equipment, because if my, I mean, if the uh, scene has to be visualized, there are Cylinders and cylinders of gas because you need gas cutters to break the ships, huge ships. And that is why these workers need to have all kinds of definitions to be incorporated in the bill. What kind of safety measures, what kind of training. And most of the time, the Honorable Minister would agree they are migrant workers coming from other parts of the country to Gujarat or to this coastline where the shipyards are there. Maybe it's Mumbai or it's Andhra, it's uh, Gujarat. So when these migrant workers come, they have lack of documents, they have lack of any proof. This needs to be incorporated as far as workers are concerned. They are to be treated as a separate kind of a class of workers who are in shipbreaking industry. So that was one uh, part of the survey. And sir, another important part is that, that you have just said that the onus lies on the ship owner. And the ship breaking facility, the person who owns the plot, that he will manage the environmental and safety standards as per the environmental law. So environmental law, we are talking of the Air Act, we are talking of the Water Act, we are also talking of the ground level water, we are also talking of the ocean water being uh, practically spoiled because of this, because the ships are being there, uh, the uh, waste goes in the untreated water, uh, goes and mixes with the ocean water. We are talking of the fish and the fauna, we are also talking of the vegetation around, and then we are talking of the Umbrella Act of Environment. Environment Tech, the latest one. So we also have all kinds of biomedical waste, domestic waste, kitchen waste, municipal waste, all these. There should be a proper act or a proper guideline for ship breaking, ship destroying waste. That should be another class which is not classified anywhere. So what kind of waste that remains as a residue should be treated? Who would be taking it? How are you going to treat it? Because this side of the developing world is being now used as a dumping ground for all these kind of activities. So this one other aspect which I wanted to bring, that is only because of this environment, it is becoming a very difficult proposition to define what do you mean by safe and environmentally sound removal of management of hazardous material. Environmental damage also is not defined. Environmental damage has to be quantified, has also to be qualified in order to bring what kind of damage is this, who pays for these damages. Maybe there's a polluter pays principle in effect there. But who pays in this particular case? The ship owner, the ship breaker, and who has indulged in these activities are lots of agencies. So there should be some kind of a coordinated department, which I would request the Honorable Minister to see that the Maritime Board, the Pollution Control Board, the Environment Board, the Waste Management uh, Agency, which you would like to bring in this whole picture, takes care of this. Sir, as much as almost I may give the exact uh, um, figure, 5 million gross ton tonnage was there in 2018. Just imagine the amount of tonnage that comes out of this ship breaking. And along, along itself has almost about 450 ships per year, sir. So this, I think, needs to be taken care of. One other aspect is very much missing, and I would like to request and urge the Honorable Minister, except if the matter goes to the court, there can be access to these places. There should be some transparency. If it is so good as it is shown out to be, then why not have a transparency mechanism? People can go and have access to these workers, can know the problems. If you know the problems, you can address these problems. The transparency factor is missing, sir, here. And one other aspect, sir, that I was just looking at some of the reports, and we'd say that almost uh, 
there are uh, 154 shipyards uh, along the coast, but there is no waste reception facility anywhere. We are talking about waste that comes out, but there is no facility which receives this waste. So I think that needs to be incorporated, whether in the bill or whether in the rules. There is no waste reception facility, sir. And uh, another thing I would like to say that uh, much has been made out of the Hong Kong Convention. I would request the Honorable Minister that those pro provisions are a little diluted. Kindly take into account the workers' safety. That is the most important because it's a labor-intensive industry. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ramiyagni.